This is a story about good life choices, which I call Patrick and the Devil. Now Patrick was a fisherman who lived on the coast, on his own as a matter of fact. And he would go out every day, as was his job, on his little fishing boat, which he would take out into the bay, throw his net in, taking whatever came from the sea to make his living from it. Patrick had, in the last week, had some very poor luck with his net in the bay. And he would cast it out and take it in with little or nothing, barely enough to feed himself, never mind sell. On one particularly poor Thursday, he cast his net out into the water and he pulled it back with not a single fish in it. Not a mackerel, not a, tra not a thing. Not a small little sardine, not a crab that had caught on the net, nothing at all. And he became famously infuriated with this turn of events. And he cast the net down into the boat and said, As soon as the devil give me gold than I get any fish from this sea today. Now no sooner had those words left his mouth than Patrick thought to himself, That was a foolish thing to have done. And so he cast outside from his belt his best line and his best hook as an apology to the ocean and swore that from that day onwards he would be a wiser man. Much chastened by the turn of events, he took his boat into the shore and went back to his hut and there he fell asleep as evening came. And his dreams were all filled with a, a murky glitter in the depths. He woke the next morning, got under his boat, and went out into the bay again. And, as before, threw out his net. After a while, he gave it an experimental tug to see if anything had come into it. And, would you know it, but he couldn't move the net an inch with his hand. And he was hauling, and he realised that something of great substance within this net. And he thought, at last, at last the catch has come in. And he started hauling up that net hand over hand over hand. It became quite alarming how heavy it was, as a matter of fact. The boat was so low in the water that the gunwales were practically touching the waves. But eventually he heaved the net over into the boat where it landed there with a great crunch. Do you know there's still not a fish in it? What there was, was a sea chest. Brown with bar, brass. With a big lock. Patrick didn't quite know what to make of this, so uh, he must uh, take it back to shore. So he rowed his boat back from the bay onto the shore. And he heaved this chest onto the stand. And disentangled it from his net with no small amount of effort. He looked it over. It looked like it had been at the bottom of the sea for a hundred years. So he got out his mallet and smashed the lock straight off, rusted as it was through. And then he lifted the lid. It glittered with gold. And I mean glittered. It was a pile of gold. Two thirds of coins right the way up to the level of the box. And the other thing that was in it was a tiny red devil. No longer than my forearm. Patrick stared at the tiny devil. Horns, tail, red, little teeth. The devil stared back at Patrick and said, Patrick! Oh, it's your lucky day, my boy. Oh, oh, this day you will not forget in a hurry and for good reason too, I might add. Oh, yes, thought Patrick. The devil didn't seem to notice. Of course, my boy. Today, fortune has come. Do you see what's in this box? All of this gold, Patrick. It's all yours. Oh, I see, said Patrick. All in exchange for my soul, is it? Not a bit of it, said the devil. Not a bit of it. All I need you to do is take the gold out of the box. And that'll be that. You see, a hundred years ago, I was summoned by a sorcerer and he made a deal with me that I'll take his soul at the end of his life, as you know, is the sort of deal that we know to make. 
However, the old cheat, right towards the end of his days, nailed my tail into this box, filled it full of gold and threw it into the bay. I've been down there ever since. No, Patrick, all I need you to do is get that nail out from my tail and I'll be off. And you can keep the gold in a good and happy life to you. So what do you say? Patrick looked at the small fortune of gold coins lying in the chest. It was beyond counting. And he thought to himself, with that much gold, I'd never have to work again. I could be a rich man. I would never have to go fishing. And then he stopped. And he thought to himself, was it not only yesterday I promised that I'd be a wiser man? And he thought, I'm a fisherman. What's my purpose in life if I'm not fishing? And the more he thought about it, the worse it got. If I let this little devil, devil go, what's he going to go and do? What's going to come down on me afterwards and the things he does? No, 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 I don't think we'll have this at all. And he turned back to the devil. Come along, Patrick, said the devil, hopping from one foot as long as his trap tail would let him. Let's be with it. I don't think so, said Patrick. And the devil's face went slack. What do you mean you don't think so? Don't be a fool, Patrick. Just take the gold. You know what I'm going to do, said Patrick? I'm going to put you right back where I found you. What? Patrick, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't, don't you drop that in on me, Patrick. Clonk. Devil could still be heard shouting inside dogs, Patrick, don't be a fool, boy. What do you think you're doing? What Patrick was doing was walking back to his, his hut and pulling out his spare mainsail, the rope that goes all the way across the ship up to the toe of the thing. And he started tying this around the chest in big sailor's knots. And the devil's going frantic inside. Patrick, what do you think you're doing? Think what you do. Patrick, think what you're doing. Think about it, Patrick. All the gold. Patrick took the box. And with his knife, he marked on the side of it, the devil lies within. And he heaved it with all of his strength into the boat. Don't you put me in the back of the boat, Patrick. Do not put me in the boat, Patrick. Don't. And then he got on the side of it. And he started pushing the boat out into the waves. Don't be a Patrick, I'm warning you. I'm serious, Patrick. I don't do it, Patrick. 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 The boat was on the water. The sail was raised. And Patrick is taking his skiff out into the bay. Don't you drop me back in the bay, Patrick. Do not drop me back in the bay. Oh, said Patrick, I'm not dropping you back in the bay. And he sailed out of the bay and into open waters. What? What are you doing? Patrick, you can't put me here. Oh, there'll be consequences, Patrick. I'll raise thunderstorms. I'll raise squalls. Oh, you can't raise a nail from your own tail, said Patrick. So don't give me any of that rubbish. And he heaved the chest over the side of his boat, which hit the water with a great splosh and sank. 30, perhaps 40 fathoms down to a depth that no fool would ever find it again. And Patrick, much satisfied, sent his boat back to shore. Now, if this is one of those stories, the next day Patrick would go out fishing, the, the fish would leap into his net and he'd be married to a mermaid by the end of the year. Let me tell you that none of this ever happened. Patrick simply got back to being a successful fisherman in his own modest way. And he lived out his life and he died as he had lived as a simple fisherman and a wise one. That is the point of the story.